This is Katherine Schmer at Chattanooga State Community College, and this is video one of Vector Valued Functions. In this video, we'll discuss motion in space. When a particle moves through space during a time interval, we think of the particle's coordinates as functions with time as the input variable. This gives us the equations x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and z equals h of t. So each variable is a different function of time. The points x, y, z make up the curve in space that we call the particle's path. The equations above parametrize the curve. A curve in space can also be represented as a vector. So as a vector, we would have the vector r of t equals f of t i plus g of t j plus h of t k. So we can interchange these two ways of writing a curve in space. The i component is just the x function, the j component is the y function, and the k component is the z function. To find points on the curve, we plug in different values for t. So at different times, your particle will be in different points in space. So here's our vector function, r of t equals f of t i plus g of t j plus h of t k. And here's a diagram of what's happening. If a particle moves through space, um, then basically the vector r is going to trace out the path of that, um, of that particle. So if I have a point on the curve, let's call it Q, and that's um, the point F of T1, G of T1, H of T1, so it's at time T equals T1, then basically I would put a vector from the origin to the point on that curve, and that would be the vector R of T1. If I have a different point on the curve, let's call it r, so f of t sub n, g of t sub n, h of t sub n, then the vector that traces to that point on the curve would be r of t sub n. So your vector r is just found by plugging in the different values of t um, along that curve, and it traces out different points on your curve. Derivatives of vector-valued functions. The way we take a derivative is component-wise. So r prime t equals f prime t i plus g prime t j plus h prime t k. So we're doing each component um, separately. This is equivalent to d over dt of f of t i plus d over dt of g of t j plus d over dt h of t k, so taking the derivative of each co component of the vector valued function. Motion in space. If r of t is the position vector of a particle at time t, then velocity is the derivative of position. So v of t equals r prime t. Speed is the magnitude of velocity, so speed equals the magnitude of v of t. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so acceleration equals v prime t, which is the second derivative of r, so r double prime t. And the unit vector v of t divided by the magnitude of v of t is the direction of motion at time t. So in other words, velocity finds the direction of motion of your particle. In this example, we're given the position of a particle in the xy plane at time t is r of t equals the quantity t plus 1i plus quantity t squared minus 1j. We want to find an equation in x and y whose graph is the path of the particle, 
and then find the particle's velocity and acceleration vectors at t equals 1. So this is really three separate tasks that we're asked to do in this question. We're given the vector valued function r of t equals t plus 1i plus t squared minus 1j. And remember the i component is your x function, so x equals t plus 1 and y equals t squared minus 1 because the j component is your y function. What we'll do in order to find an equation in x and y is we will solve the x function for t. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get t equals x minus 1. Now I want to relate x and y, so I'll plug in t equals x minus 1 into my y equation, y equals t squared minus 1. So when I substitute that in, I get y equals quantity x minus 1, quantity squared, minus 1. And that's my equation in x and y whose graph is the path of the particle. So if I graphed that function in my calculator, that would show me the path that the particle is going to follow in two dimensions. Now the second part of the problem asked us to find the particle's velocity and acceleration vectors at t equals 1. So we know that the velocity v of t equals r prime t, the derivative of position. So that's d over dt of t plus 1, and that's our i component, plus d over dt of t squared minus 1 j. So I take the derivative, so I get 1i plus 2tj, so using our simple derivative power rule. And now v of 1, I'll just plug in a 1 for t, so I get i plus 2j. Acceleration equals the derivative of velocity. a of t equals v prime t. That's equal to d over dt of 1, i, plus d over dt of 2t, j. And that's 0, i plus 2j. So if I plug in a 1 for t, there are no t's in that equation, so I just get a of 1 equals 2j. It's going to be the same, same acceleration at any time on that curve. So just remember you always take the derivative component-wise and um, you start with position, take the derivative to find velocity, take the derivative of velocity to find acceleration. In this next example, the equation r of t equals e to the negative t i plus 2 cosine of 3 t j plus 2 sine of 3 t k is the position of a particle in space at time t. We want to find the particle's velocity and acceleration vectors and then write the particle's velocity at t equals zero as a product of its speed and direction. So we know that velocity equals the derivative of position, v of t equals r prime t. So that's equal to d over dt of e to the negative t i plus d over dt of 2 cosine 3 t j plus d over dt of 2 sine 3 t k. So I take the derivative of the i component first. Derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t. And that's my i component. The derivative of my j component I have 2 cosine of 3t, so the derivative of that is negative 6 sine of 3t. I'm using the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside function is 3. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So those combine to give me negative 6 sine of 3t as my j component. Now my k component, I have 2 sine of 3t. 
the derivative is going to be plus 6 cosine of 3tk because the derivative of the inside function is 3 using the chain rule and the derivative of sine is cosine. So there's my velocity function, negative e to the negative ti plus negative 6 sine of 3tj plus 6 cosine of 3tk. Now I want acceleration. So acceleration a of t equals v prime t, the derivative of velocity. So I have d over dt of negative e to the negative ti plus d over dt of negative 6 sine of 3tj plus d over dt of 6 cosine of 3tk. The i component derivative of negative e to the negative t gives me e to the negative t i. On my j component, I'll use the chain rule. The derivative of the inside function is 3. So that combines with the negative 6 to give me negative 18 cosine of 3t j. And the k component, I have a derivative of negative 18 sine of 3t k. Now if you need to review your derivatives of trig functions or the chain rule or any of your derivative rules, please go back and do so at this point. Now the last part of the problem said write the particle's velocity at t equals zero as a product of its speed and direction. So we already found that the velocity equals negative e to the negative ti plus negative 6 sine of 3tj plus 6 cosine of 3tk. We're going to plug in a 0 for t. v of 0 equals negative e to the 0i plus negative 6 sine of 0j plus 6 cosine of 0k. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that gives me v of 0 equals negative 1i plus 0j plus 6k. Now speed is the magnitude of velocity, so the speed equals the magnitude of v of 0, so the square root of 1 plus 0 plus 36. I'm squaring each component of v of 0. So that gives me a speed of square root of 37. So v of t equals square root of 37, that's the speed, times the vector negative 1 over square root of 37i plus 6 over square root of 37k. I'm taking each component of v of 0 and dividing by the speed. So there is my velocity as a product of its speed and direction. Speed is out front. The direction vector is v of 0 over magnitude of v of 0.